munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and today I am doing an unboxing review of the Furplast Hamsterville Hamster Cage. You guys remember doing a poll on one of my past videos about hamster enclosures that I was reviewing the reviews of. Well, I had a poll in there and you guys wanted me to review the Savic Cage as the number one choice. So you're getting the second best thing here which I have bought today. At the time of filming that video, the Savic enclosure was in my reasonable price range to purchase it and review it. Unfortunately, it jumped up to $129.99. Oh my God. So the $106.29 cage here, I did not pay that much for. It was a cheaper price online and it came used, but with cosmetic defects. Amazon will take things back and then try to turn them over for a profit. So I'm actually gonna see if this enclosure today is functional in Amazon's terms. So we're gonna be putting this all together. I don't know if the instructions are gonna come with it, but this is the second highest requested cage of that poll that we took, which is the Hamsterville from Furplast. So technically this is actually the first Furplast cage that I am actually be reviewing with you guys today because the other one that I had previously was from a rescue intake and it was never an unboxing or review of the cage. Let me just go ahead and let you know this pan is tiny. Like, oh my gosh, wow. And it has grids on the inside. I hate the Furplast gridded bottoms. Plastic material, this has been recycled about five times more than likely. Doesn't look like there's any cosmetic imperfections here. So, oh God, oh, look at this. It just came like this. So this is what I would call a vertical enclosure because most of the area space is up above in the sky rather than horizontal, which hamsters need. Now, could this cage potentially be good for a mouse? Well, we will get to that here soon, but let me just try my best to assemble it in front of you guys here and then talk a little bit more about appropriate care of our beloved animals. But oh my gosh, this wheel is so tiny. Oh, it's so tiny. So they gave me a really tiny size fur plast house right here. You could barely fit a mouse in here, let alone a dwarf hamster as pictured. This is supposed to be a house. It's all kind of thrown in here. I hate this. Wow, what type of wood is this? I probably should have looked up what type of wood this is, but it heavily smells. But it's not a bad smell, but it just heavily smells. Oh, we got some texture on this. It possibly looks like there's a coating on this side here versus this side. So I think this is more of the waterproof protected coating, but I would think that it would be on this side too, because if water were to seep on the sides here, which also has the protective coating, that this right here should have been protected too. So I'm not seeing anywhere where it says there is like cosmetic imperfections on this. Maybe I accidentally grabbed the one that says the box would be damaged, but everything inside is perfectly fine. I don't know, maybe maybe I got that one instead. I thought that I got the one that was cosmetically damaged, but who knows? Then we got this, then we got this. Lots of component pieces that I'm not gonna have fun with when putting together. Oh, that's gonna be annoying. Hallelujah, so we have instructions here and there. And on the back, there's a lip right here. If this or even this goes on the inside, then the animal is gonna be able to chew on that because there is a surface area where it can chew. I don't like wooded enclosures that don't protect the wood because with your rodent that has incisors and is meant for chewing on this type of texture, they're gonna chew this up. If I'm a little bit quiet during assembling, I'm sorry. This is very difficult to read. It's just this big setup. It's not telling you what to do step by step. It literally is showing you one, two, three, four, and it's not demonstrating what you're supposed to be doing. It's just showing you where to line everything up at. How about that? I'm just gonna set this in here as the picture right here shows. And then we're just gonna go ahead and set up this side. You're supposed to at least put this part up so that it would align here because there's supposed to be like a little gap underneath. Oh, that's really annoying. Like trying to just as one single person doing this 
this is actually taking me a lot longer to set up because so I'm trying to find the hole and to get it directly in the hole. Here we go. I'm trying to find another nail. This is the... Oh no. Oh no, no, no. You heard that, didn't you guys? I just moved it slightly and it felt like the wood snapped. Stupid wood enclosure is coming together. Woo! All right, what's the next part? Apparently I was supposed to put something up here, so let's go find that. So does it face like this? Yes, yes it does. So we got one nail here, one nail there. Looks like it wants us to slide on the top part. Find one till you know which one works. Yeah, this one seems better. Yeah, that this one looks like that's the correct one. All right. So let's just make sure it's going in. Yes, it did. Perfect. Yep, it was this one. This one's a lot shorter than the other one that I just placed in there. So it's supposed to be this side. I think I'm supposed to put it inside of. Yep. Okay, so that's what I did wrong. Just put the top part on incorrectly. But I got it now, so we'll screw it back in. All right, now the other side. Okay. There we go. Okay. Oh, come on, stay together, stay together. I've almost got you solved. Stop coming apart. Oh, sliding up is not working. I'll just use my core strength, yeah. All right, slide upward, there we go. Now it wants me to put on the front part, which would be the hinged part right here. Okay, that's not even going into the right spot. Come on, why? So, in the photo, in the next side, it literally says from the ground up, start putting in the ledges. Now, in these pictures right here, it does not tell you exactly where to put them. So, it's gonna be just play it by visuals here to see if I can. So these are gonna be the little hooks on the cage side here. So, I have to twist it in. Ooh, 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 look, I didn't even see this before. I guess maybe I wasn't paying attention, but this wood right here is cracked. So that's not good. Maybe, where's there an indication I need where? Right? That seems really high. <laughs> Did I put that too high? I might have. I think that's a good medium length. Now with these ladders right here, you're supposed to be using the small hook to then screw them in and then hook them on the holes that are in the ledges here. There we go. Okay. Okay, okay. Be like that. Ow. Pinch myself, but it's okay. It's okay. One more. Yeah, okay. Okay. shitty wheel. So in this 
photo, it shows you a pretty big house because there's a Jungarian hamster outside of it, even though it is a, you know, Photoshop picture. But when I go to make it, Look at the size of that. Can your Jungarian fit inside of here? Wow, Furplast, you literally, with your name, right there on the packaging, manufactured something that cannot be used. That the size is not appropriate for anything but possibly a mouse, but a mouse is bigger than this. My adult mice are bigger than this. This is not the same hide that you see in the picture, that you're taking up a pretty big chunk of that ledge there. It is now completed. The Hamsterville from Furplast, done. This looks appealing to both you and I. Don't you agree? It looks pretty well set up. Functionality wise, eh, garbage. You wanna know why? The innards can easily be chewed up. And I looked at reviews on Amazon of this cage where people said that this area down below here, you can easily have your hamster escape from. When we open up the flap here, this tray can pop out. Once a hamster can get a hold of a lip, it can start chewing the whole thing up, including these tabs right here, where it's very interesting and odd that this enclosure has tabs in the pan, which indicate that there's supposed to be a wire that goes there. There's no wire that sits on top of them. So I'm assuming that this is the same pan as some of their other models. That way they can just keep producing this for not just this enclosure, but for another one, because that is only there for wire to catch it and to stay securely in the pan. But hamster owners say they chew out from here and there's actually room under here. So if the hamster decides he wants to chew that lip, he's gonna then chew this out. And the stupidest design I wanna say is this. This has no function. It literally shows you in the photo stick underneath, but I thought it would hook to something or it'll prevent the hamster from escaping. No, it just sits on your floor for some reason. So once your hamster chews out of the pan area right here because it's open and there's easy access to it, I can easily pull it out and push it in because of that stupid gap, they're gonna chew it. And I'm sure that if people are not supplying their animal with enough space, they're gonna start chewing on the ledges here, chewing on the bridges. Now the ledges are pretty cool. They're very sturdy, I like them. Still don't know what wood this is. I would hope that for pet products, that they would use pet safe woods. I will post a note here on screen if I can figure out which wood it is, but you got accessories you don't really need. You got a really huge dish for supposedly a hamster or a mouse right there. It takes up a lot of space. There's a tiny house that you can't really use. The wheel is five inches. It's not suitable for a mouse even. And of course it's not suitable for gerbils because this whole enclosure will be chewed in an instant for gerbils. So this X out for gerbils, not appropriate. So the wheel that it comes with is super thin plastic, so thin that if you apply any pressure to the wheel, if you put something in the wheel, it automatically goes down. It doesn't stabilize because the mount on the back of the wire here is so flimsy. It's not sturdy and it makes the plastic better when weight is applied. The water bottle nozzle is so thick. I don't know why it's so thick, but it's bending the bars and this is possibly a wide enough space for an animal to try to squeeze on through. That's so dangerous. I don't like that at all. It feels very unsafe. Looks appealing, doesn't it? Uh-huh, but is very not feng shui at all. And this is 11 inches by 22 inches when measured from the inside, not the outside, because the inside is where the hamster's gonna be, so you don't have to measure it all the way out on the outer sides. But this is 242 square inches of floor space underneath the minimum for hamsters and underneath our rescue's minimum of at least 288 square inch for mice. And that is just with horizontal space. So the vertical space, great, looks cool, looks nice. And you would think that maybe it could be for mice, but mice do need to be able to burrow. This does have at least going all the way up to the very top of that front section here, five inches worth of bedding that you can place inside of here but this already is marketed as unsafe. It's a scheme. Furplast gives you all these really cool looking accessories and cool looking setups, but 
they know that the hamsters will chew out of here. They have incisors that will gnaw on these materials here. Mice are definitely big chewers. If you give them a lot of nesting materials and things to chew on, they will chew on sticks, they will chew on twigs, they will chew on hay and straw, and they'll chew on the plastic rim too. But I did see some bent bars in here and it could easily get damaged. Materials are bad, wire, not so great, plastic pan, of course, I don't like it. The design, stupid, 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 stupid. If this was executed a little bit better and of course a lot bigger, good, go for it. But this doesn't meet the US minimum square inch of floor space for hamsters and it doesn't for mice either, at least for us. Mice care is a little bit tricky, so I'll say this to you now. Mice need to have lots and lots of enrichment, things filled up from the bottom to the top with stuff to do. So they can benefit from vertical enclosures, but we at the rescue make it a rule that you need to be able to put in large amounts of items and things for them to do in order for them to be fully immersed in an enriched life. Scientific studies have shown that mice are not like hamsters. They do not exhibit that stress-like behavior as hamsters do when confined in smaller spaces, and they're not stress-prone like that. They are, however, stress-prone when there's absolutely nothing for them to do. They will start chewing, but they don't have the same mental sense as searing hamsters, dwarf hamsters, etc. But they can still get stressed out. Not saying that like all the fear is taken out of a mouse, but mice don't have the same needs as hamsters. But Always remember guys, bigger can be better. Try to see if you can tackle your animal's needs. I wouldn't be surprised if people were using this for mice, um, but I, I personally wouldn't. I would use something else. But this here, this is an appropriate mouse and dwarf hamster setup. This is a Savic cage. It's either the Savic Mickey cage or the Savic Haven cage. But the Haven cage actually has an opening up top and comes with different accessories. But this right here, is a really good enclosure for hamsters and mice. So I would highly recommend this over this because with this one, you can put large amounts of items in here. You can fill it up, you can customize it. You can put in hammocks for mice, ledges. You can take the things out of here and it would fit better in here, but you can have so much inside of here and it is beneficial both in pan depth and in height. So try checking this out because apparently this right now, 106, this right now, if you get it used, is about the same price. The price tag for this one, which it comes with other accessories too, is roughly about $129.99. I know the prices have been varying, but guess what? I actually found this specific enclosure on offer up. So really good deal. I would highly recommend you guys do a little bit more research. Don't use this enclosure for a hamster, especially since you have one area right here to access and then you have one in the front, but guess what? If you get this enclosure, you can put your head in here. You can't put your head through here. So I hope you guys make the right choice and thank you guys so much for watching my unboxing video of this cage. It's an unsafe cage, should not be owned. Don't own this cage, find something else. And I'll see you guys in the next video, signing off. Bye-bye.